Our job is to try to understand how a single individual at the base, or single species at the bottom of the tree of life, evolve in so many thousands of different species of all sorts of shape and diversity. But it's a humongous task, and there's so many variables and so many things that have happened in such a complex system. You think you're answering one question, but you're also creating another 10 question or more even because you realize, oh, this didn't quite work the way I thought, so why, why is it like that? Every little tip of this tree is the result of millions and millions of years of evolution. And, and what triggers the differences between those two tips could be a, all sorts of things. It could be a change in, in the relationship with the insects that pollinate them. It could be a change in the environment that actually led that species to evolve um, a resistant to water stress so it can live in deserts. It can be uh, that it dispersed by accident very, very far away uh, due to some kind of very big storm and then ended up in a, another area of the world where it developed into something different than where it came from. DNA and looking at plants, at the morphology of plants, are not two mutually exclusive things. I think they have to work together. You collect a plant that you don't know where it comes from or you don't have any flowers or it's just a fragment, then you'll be able, with DNA, to place it in the tree of life of plants. But you'll still need the, the morphology and the ecology, etc., of those species to understand what the DNA is telling you.